Trustee Bolthus. Here. Trustee Taglia. Here. Trustee Case. Here. Trustee Bullwinkle. Here. President Cullerton. Here. Uh, and Trustee Aiello is on his way as he just is leaving his law office right now. Uh, also to my right, uh, we have a new attorney in the uh, in the house. Um, Kathleen Field Orr uh, will be our new attorney. Any comments, real quick, or are you just happy to be here? Delight, there we go. honor. I like her already. All right. Um, first thing we'll go into. Uh, let's all please stand for the pledge. Chief Dusky, you want to lead us to the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you could all remain standing, Trustee Tagley, would you please lead us in a prayer? Certainly. Our Heavenly Father, will thou be pleased to grant that this meeting, thus begun in order, be conducted in peace and closed in harmony. Amen. 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 All right. If you're not familiar with our agenda, the first item on the agenda is public participation on agenda items. Our agendas are right up on the front doors. Come walking in. We have items 1 through 19 tonight. Uh, so if you want to speak on items 1 through 19, now would be your time on public participation on agenda items. <coughs> we have a second agenda tonight, which is our Committee of the Whole. What happens at the Committee of the Whole is each item is brought up individually and we allow you to speak at each item. So if you want to speak on something that's on the Committee of the Whole, wait please until we get to the Committee of the Whole and you can speak then. Uh, so first, and if you have something that is totally irrelevant for both of those agenda items and you'd like to speak, item number 20 is public participation on non-agenda items. So, if we could go with public participation on agenda items only. All right, seeing none, we will go to item two, approval of the agenda. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? Mr. President. Trustee Taglia. I'll move to approve the agenda. Can I have a second? Mr. President. Trustee Bolthus. Second. Questions or comments from the board on the approval of the agenda? All right, roll call vote, please. Trustee Aiello? Yes. Trustee Bolthus? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Bullwinkle? Yes. Trustee Davis? Yes. President Cullerton? Yes. Item three is our consent agenda. Refer A, referral to Planning and Zoning Commission, petition PZ-11-0004, amend ordinance 3596, conditional use for drive through and sign variations at 290 West Roosevelt Road, Villa Park Boom Real Estate Development Petitioner. B, referral to Planning and Zoning Commissioner, Petitioner PZ-11-0003, amend Ordinance 1367 for a building addition at 300 West Roosevelt Road, Villa Park, Patrick Thompson, Burke, Warren, McKay, and Saratella, PC Petitioner. C, minutes from November 28, 2011, public hearing. D, minutes from November 28, 2011, village board meeting. E, minutes from November 14, 2011, executive session. F, minutes from the November 21st, 2011, executive session. Can I have a motion on the consent agenda? Mr. President. Trustee Bolthus. Motion for the consent agenda. Can I have a second, please? Mr. President. Trustee Case. Second. Questions or comments from the board on the consent agenda? Mr. President. Trustee Bullwinkle. Just for the public's clarification, letter A is referring to <coughs> a proposed new Sonic drive through restaurant there on Roosevelt Road, and letter B under consent agenda is referring to um, an additional 2,400 square feet uh, that will be added to the Haggerty Buick GMC dealership in town. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Trustee Bolthus? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Bullwinkle? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Davis? Yes. Trustee Aiello? Yes. President Cullen? Yes. Item four, approved bill listing. Approved bill listing dated December 12, 2011 in the amount of $1,045,755.50. Can I have a motion to approve the bill listing? Mr. President. Trustee Bolthus. Make a motion to approve the bill listing. Can I have a second? Mr. President. Trustee Case. Second. 
Questions or comments from the board on the bill listing? Mr. President. Trustee Davis. Uh, I have one for the fire department on the bill listing. All right. Um, it says here for, it looks like. Can you like give us a page and a. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Page 15, uh, 301 is the account number. It's the very last item. Is that uh, two new sets of turnout gear? Uh, I believe so, yeah, that was that was in the bill. Yeah, for thirty nine ninety four. Correct. Do we have no employees or just replacement? Just replacement. We have a six year replacement on the on the on the uh, turnout gear. Okay. So this Thank you. Got <coughs> Thanks, Chief. Any other questions or comments from the board? Roll call vote to approve the bill listing. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Bullwinkle? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Davis? Yes. Trustee Aiello? Yes. Trustee Bulpa? Yes. President Cullerton? Yes. All right. Before we go on to item five, I see some of my favorite people in the audience and some uh, people who did an absolutely tremendous job in Florida. And uh, rather than have them sit through all the nice, boring stuff, but we did say that they had to do a cheer for us. So I'm going to let Gene Taylor take the microphone and introduce everybody and uh, get our, I guess, our our champions oh, up wow. here, right? You ready? Hi, we're back. <laughs> uh, the girls went to Florida this past, or two weekends ago, and they did absolutely wonderful. Um, they placed third in the nation in their age group. So uh, we just wanted to come back and um, thank the community of Villa Park for their support and helping the girls uh, get down there and uh, some of the businesses and organizations that gave an extra little bit, uh, the Villa Park Lions <coughs> Club, Villa Park Junior Women's Club, Inland Bank, uh, Billy's Pizza Dugout, and all the businesses that let us put donation jars uh, Mike's Meat Market, Dominic's Pizza, Mickey's Hot Dog, Michael Anthony's, Mike's Meat Market, fun yeah, Funky Java, <laughs> and uh, the 7-Eleven on uh, Westmore and Lombard. So they wanted to, they, and Ace Harvard. So <laughs> they wanted to thank all of them. Uh, we don't have, uh, I forgot last time to thank her, but Jody Carey Swanson, who is uh, the head coach, who did an absolute fabulous job with the girls and always remembered that um, it was about the girls when it came to coaching and everything else in the aspect of cheer and our two junior coaches Ashley Haney and Devin Ledlow um, but Anna Campbell is here and she helped coach and I, I have the girls so I don't know where you want them to stand um, you stand up here or what, whatever works Gene, we'll just you call guys them up uh, uh, <laughs> Sammy Pycor PJ Burroughs Right there. Oh, yeah. Olivia Rundgren, <laughs> Maddie that Campbell, so get the camera. Rachel Joyce, Jalissa Lobos, Lobos, sorry, uh, Lindsay Petit, Lindsay Joyce, Jessica Taylor, Jess, or, yeah. Katie Carey, Allie Ranieri, and Ashley Wright. And we are missing Amanda Thomas. Yeah, okay, that's great. Um, so, girls, you... Uh, What's easy that's not going to break your neck right where you're at? <laughs> and remember, see that camera up there? All of the community is watching. <laughs> <laughs> because we get a huge audience for our village board meetings. We usually have all 22,000 people in town watching. <laughs> so, do something fun right up there, okay? Girls, do you want to do your... Your competition chair for them? Or? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, Maddie, you want to call it out?
girls, can you turn around and say thank you? Next year, when you guys take first place, we'll clear out the oh, whole room oh, and we'll yeah. let the pyramids and everything go. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you for you. representing Hill Park. Thank you. Thank you. And if you want to show that big trophy, put that up on the cameras real quick. Let's see those big trophies. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, we had to do that because that is impressive right there. Third place nationally for a program that's been around for four years. Uh, and as you heard, they mentioned the name Villa Park at least three or four times just in that cheer alone. So, really, we can't buy advertising like that. That was fantastic. So, thank you to all of them, and thank you to the Youth Warrior football program as well. The cheerleader and the football program has done a tremendous job in this town and has really sparked a, a huge interest throughout the community. With uh, I know I was involved in it this year. Uh, Manager Keener was involved in it this year. We've got uh, a ton of parents and community members involved and it really just sort of pushes our presence beyond the boundaries of the town as well. So thank you to all of them, and congratulations again. All right, item five, second reading of an ordinance levying taxes for the fiscal year of the village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, commencing on the first day of May 2012 and ending on the 30th day of April 2013. Could I have a motion for a second reading, please? Mr. President. Trustee Aiello. Second reading. Can I have a second, please? Mr. President. Trustee Boltis. Second. Questions or comments from the board? Roll call vote, please. Trustee Bullwinkle. Yes. Trustee Case. Yes. Trustee Davis. Yes. Trustee Aiello. Yes. Trustee Boltis. Yes. Trustee Taglia. Yes. President Cullen. Yes, item six, first reading of an ordinance of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, permitting and regulating parades and public assemblies. Can I have a motion on the first reading? Mr. President. Trustee Aiello. Move for first reading. Can I have a second, please? Mr. President. Trustee Case. Second. Questions or comments from the board on the first reading? Mr. President. Trustee Boltis. Uh, one of the sections in here refers to permit fees, <coughs> and one section in here refers to penalties. Uh, will we get those penalties and those fees uh, before the second reading? Uh, according to the manager, yes, we will. Okay. I just didn't want to have to revisit this again. So. All right. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Roll call vote, please. Trustee Case. Yes. Trustee Davis. Yes. Trustee Aiello. Yes. Trustee Volpa. Yes. Trustee Taglia. Yes. Trustee Bullwinkle. Yes. Press and colored. Yes. Uh, item 7, first reading of an ordinance amending certain provisions of Chapter 7 and 9 of the Villa Park Municipal Code, Reason Fire Prevention Code. Can I have a motion on the first reading? Mr. President. Trustee Davis. Make a motion for the first reading. Can I have a second? Mr. President. Trustee Bullwinkle. Second the motion. Questions or comments from the board? Roll call vote, please. Trustee Davis. Yes. Trustee Aiello. Yes. Trustee Bullpuss. Yes. Trustee Taglia. Yes. Trustee Case. <coughs> yes. Trustee Bullwinkle. Yes. President Cullerton. Yes. Item 8. First reading of an ordinance to the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, amending the Order of Village Board Business and Rules of Citizen Participation. Can I have a motion on the first reading? Mr. President. Trustee Taglia. Move for the first reading. Can I have a second? Who was it? Trustee Aiello. Second. Questions or comments from the board? Mr. President. Trustee Boltis. Um... And the residents' uh, participation section, our, our, our custom is all, has been for the last number of years that the resident didn't have to sign in. They could just approach the podium and, um, and state their name and their address. And I noticed on the new ordinance, they're required, they would be required to fill out a card and probably submit that to the clerk. And I was just wondering how the rest of the board feels about that, because I know a lot of people are a little some reason they don't want to fill out the card, you know. So I was wondering what the other board member's opinion is about maybe not requiring <coughs> them to fill the card out. If I'm trying to find a page where that's at. It's on uh, item two, public concerns and comments. That's under A, persons wishing to speak during any portion of a board meeting shall sign in before the start of the meeting, stating name, address, and topic to be discussed. And uh, our attorney, Kathy uh, Yes. Uh, 
It is intended to assist the clerk. It is not intended and would be illegal for us to refuse someone to address this board by not signing in so that we can change the language for second reading and make it uh, may sign in so as opposed to must. It was never intended to eliminate anyone's ability to address the board. That would be against the law. So I know it would help the clerk. She'd get the proper spelling. That's the whole that purpose kind of, stuff. of it. Because so I'm many sure times you say your name so quickly because you assume everybody knows who you are. Mm -hmm. So. So we will change the language to may sign in. Would that be of more assistance? Because we can follow the practice where we where people are agreeable and where people are not agreeable. So be it. That's what I'd like. Okay. Any other any thoughts on the. Uh, any thoughts on the signing in? Any other thoughts on, uh, if you look under public concerns on page two, that would be uh, section A, 2-408A. Two, two um, I guess I'll just weigh in. Does anyone, does anyone feel that it's a necessity to make people sign in? I mean, I know we haven't done it for a while. I think uh, we did away with it when I was a trustee. Because the green cards tended to, we had green cards, for those of you who remember, that people grabbed at the front, they signed in, handed them in, they tended to get lost, or people didn't fill one out and felt like they couldn't come up and talk, so we actually just did away and had people coming up to the podium. Um, maybe just a sign-in sheet up on the podium, so if somebody does speak, they can put it down there. That way it goes in reference to the clerk and gives them the, gives her the correct spelling and everything else for the name. So when they come up to the podium, they sign in. Good idea. Everybody like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Be, change will be made for second reading. I believe the green cards were taken off because the last clerk decided. Usually the clerks that decide if it should be signed in or not. Um, it's under their decision for that. Um, that's why it was taken away. Okay. Um, I have not made a de big deal out of it only because people seem to kind of come up at random and all of a sudden want to talk. But I would like them to sign in or at least print their name up there. So if we have um, a sheet up at the podium, would that yeah, definitely help facilitate? Yeah, I don't think that's unreasonable since we're no. not publicly reading out their name if they don't no. want it read or their address or whatever is on the paper. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we just have a, a sign-in sheet up there as people come to speak, that yes. would A, give you all the clarification on the correct well, spellings? It would, it would and, help, yes. It okay. would help, but we, don't, we may or may not require a card. It's up to you. Everybody agreeable to having a sign-in sheet up at the podium? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yes. All right. We can change that language to that for the second reading. Mr. President. Trustee Bolthus. <laughs> Another one on the, on the public participation. I noticed on our last ordinance uh, we had, um, you know, sometimes our meetings run kind of long, and we had the wording in there that the public participation uh, would start at 9 o'clock, no matter where we were in the agenda. Um, we would break and go to public participation at 9 so they didn't have to stay here till you know we've been here till 10 30 a couple times this last year uh, you know I just want to bring it up for the rest of the board members to see you know do we want to just leave it that we follow the agenda or do we make uh, accommodations to allow public participation at 9 o'clock no matter where we are on the agenda I can go either way, but I just wanted to point it out that it's we're changing that. <coughs> Any thoughts uh, from anyone else on that particular topic? We can leave it the way it is, then. the way it's written. I mean, I try usually to accommodate people to get them. I know. Hence you do. tonight. Right. Right. <laughs> um, usually yeah. by nine o'clock, they start leaving anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, that's fine. All right. So for the second reading, we'll change the. Uh, so we have a sign-in sheet up at the podium to uh, to make this all better for our clerk. All right. Any other questions or comments on the uh, first reading? All right, roll call vote, please. Trustee Ayello? Yes. Trustee Bolthus? Yes. 
Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Bullwinkle? Yes. Trustee Davis? Yes. President Cullerton? Yes. Item 9, first and final reading of an ordinance amending Chapter 25 of the Villa Park Municipal Code, water rates. Can I have a motion on the first and final? Mr. President. Uh, who was that, Trustee Ayala? Yeah. I'll, I'll be the one to make the first and final. Can I have a second? Mr. President. Trustee Taglia? Second. Questions or comments for the board? Seeing none, roll call vote. Trustee Bullfuss? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Bullwinkle? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Davis? No. Trustee Aiello? Yes. President Colors. Yes. Item 10, first and final reading of an ordinance amending the annual budget. Budget amendment number three for the Village of Villa Park for the fiscal year commencing May 1st, 2011 and ending April 30th, 2012. Can I have a motion for the first and final? Mr. President. Trustee Taglia. I move for the first and final. Can I have a second? Mr. President. Trustee Davis. Second. Questions or comments on the board? Mr. President. Uh, Trustee Aiello. This is the one... We, if we vote in favor of this uh, first and final reading, this is the one that puts money into remodeling North, the building on North Avenue, correct? Yes. And is this not being tabled to after we the home? Items 11 and 12? This is item 10. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Right. So, no. All right, so no on the second <laughs> one. Yes, on the first one. Gotcha. And then. Um, money that we're going to spend on remodeling the building on North Avenue. Final number, I forgot what it was. Uh, it's approximately two hundred thousand or so. It should be right in here. I think it's around two ten, I believe, at the, at the most. That's at the high end. And then who are we moving in over there? We will be moving in uh, code enforcement, uh, community development, uh, zoning, and possibly. Uh, CSO. I know we talked about that previously. And my suggestion is I would like to approve the ordinance with that section taken out. That part of the budget amendment. With the removal of Remodeling of the property on North Avenue. That's it. I don't, I don't necessarily want to permanently uh, stop that. Just want to consider that a little longer. Okay, so that would be then a motion to approve. First and final amending of the budget. Essentially, you're making a motion to remove item TIF 3, correct? Correct. This one right here, not all of TIF 3. It's not, not all of TIF 3? Oh. So it would be a motion to amend which pieces, though, from TIF 3? Only the remodel 325, but the... At the bottom, there's a debit and a credit. Right here. Right there. Yeah. Okay. Mr. President? So it would be to remove uh, contractual services and fund balance. The last two pieces, if you look at your uh, piece, that say contractual f services and fund balance to remove that from this budget amendment. So there's a... So would that be a motion on the... Motion to amend the uh, first and final reading of an ordinance amending the annual budget. Okay. So All right. So we need a... So we have a motion to amend um, the first and final amending the annual budget. So we need a second for that on the amendment, on, the amendment, on Trustee Aiello's amendment. Do we have a second on Trustee Aiello's amendment? Mr. President, may I ask a question? Before we second? No. No. <laughs> if you want to ask a question about it, there's yes. no. If you want to, if you want to second it and then ask the question, you can do that. And it opens it up. Whether you, you know, you don't have, just because you second it doesn't mean you have to vote yes or no. It just opens it up for questions. 
I'm going to vote yes because I want to hear what Trustee Ailes says. Well, then just, say, just second the motion, second and then we open. Motion, all right. Now so, you're going to vote on okay. All right. Now it's discussion. Thank so you. now we have discussion on the second. Uh, okay? Trustee Davis, hold on. He's got it. <laughs> Go ahead, Trustee Davis. Uh, if I'd like to ask Trustee Ailes why he wants to postpone it. I talked to planning and zoning. It doesn't seem like planning and zoning is um, in complete support of it. Um, I don't understand why we're moving over there yet. Where we, it seems like it seems like we've been shrinking everybody down, and we're going to expand into another building, even though we're getting rid of staff. So it seems like it may end up not being necessary. Uh, planning is only committee. Seemed to have some questions about it also. Okay. Sure, Didn't think it was the best spot for code enforcement or for community development to be out there. I understand only parts of our, parts of it are going out there and parts of it are not going out there. There might be CSOs out there. There might not be CSOs out there. And if I'm going to support it, I just I want to understand it better, at the very least. And as it stands right now, I don't feel like I understand it well enough. Mm -hmm. That it's a good idea. Um, to the extent it's a bad idea, it's it's two hundred grand to spend on a building on North Avenue that may have other uses that I haven't considered. It could be sold, generating income. Um, you've got all these people working out of here right now. And other than the fact that I agree that that room back there should be moved, outside of that. I don't see a need out there yet. Mr. President. Trustee Davis. Question for the manager. Now, moving TD over there, will that be a one-stop place for permits, or are they going to have to run back to this building, too? Right now, <clears throat> we're in the process of making the village a one-stop process, which will be implemented uh, the week of January 2nd, where any developers or residents desiring to pull a permit within the Village of Villa Park will go strictly to uh, Public Works Building, which is across, and they would, can obtain there any permit for a building um, or for Public Works, any driveway permits, anything of that nature, stormwater. So effective January 2nd, there'll be one-stop permitting within Villa Park. Second question to that would be then, what will be the final purpose of the building on North Avenue? Final, the building on North Avenue, 325 East North Avenue, has been vacant for at least two years. The village purchased it over two years ago for a certain sum of money, and it's been, sat vacant ever since. Um, the purpose for 325 would be that we relocate the remainder of community development, which is the code enforcement, um, the system director of uh, community development and more than likely the CSOs to 325 East North Avenue to provide a presence in that TIF so that the residents of Villa Park know that we're serious about development and know that we're serious about code enforcement and some other items that uh, we're going to uh, be looking at in January and February. Uh, there is not enough room in public works to relocate the entire staff of community development. Uh, it just can't happen. Um, right now, the CSOs, I don't believe, uh, have their own offices or fully integrated with code enforcement. And if you take a look at the village overall, we need to survive be, by being fiscally responsible. And so by taking the CSOs and the code enforcement folks and meshing them together and cross-train, we'll have the ability not only to have three to four CSOs plus our code enforcement folks fully trained and out in the community doing almost the same work, which is probably twice the amount of folks that we have now doing that. And they'll be responsible, I believe at this point, in the public session, they'll be responsible in reporting to the Assistant Director of Community Development, which would be Melissa. Trustee Case. Um, 
I don't agree with the pricing uh, at all. I think it's going to be a Taj Mahal, and I don't think we need it at the time. I think I don't. I think we should look into the pricing a little bit more, as far as what we're spending over there. I think it's really out of hand with the pricing of everything over there. I'd really like to investigate it a little bit more. Your Honor, I'd, I'd be uh, more than happy to investigate the pricing. Um, I believe that the quotes are at the high end to cover any miscellaneous items that we may find. What has happened in that particular building, since it's been vacant for two years, has the, there's been a uh, water main break inside that building. And typically when you have a business, the water mains may be in the floor, they may be in the walls. The water mains in this building are in the roof, in the ceiling. And when they broke, it came down in the entire building and then mold started to take place. So we had to actually repair the water mains um, and repair the drywall, or remove it, I should say, and then do repairs to the floor is what we'll probably have to do, the carpet and things of that nature. But, yes, uh, 211000 is probably a little bit on the high end, and some of that, I'm sure, can be reduced by maybe cleaning the carpet and things of that nature. It should not be a Taj Mahal. We certainly are fiscally responsible in Villa Park and should not waste any taxpayers' money. However, I think it's very important to move forward with that building to establish the one permitting and the things that we have uh, going on with the village in January and February. I think it's important that um, we take a hard look at the adjoining offices and the lack of space. And when we implement our programs, <clears throat> a lot of times we do not go paperless. In fact, a lot of times we have to use even more paper to fill up our file cabinets because we're constantly following up on tickets or following up on litigation or following up on code enforcement. And if we took a moment and walked into that room, um, it's pretty full. It's pretty full, and I'd be shocked if the fire escape isn't blocked by a chair or something. Um, it's, it's scary. Um, and I'll, as, a, as a village manager, I do not like going in there. I feel crowded. I feel um, squished. And really, um, you can ask Melissa, I would not want to work in there. Um, we can take a look at the former director of community development that uh, brought developers into her office. And if we left right now and went in there, she has files sitting on her floor. There's no room for your feet. And that's what we show the residents of Villa Park that want to develop within Villa Park. Thank you. Mr. President. Trustee Taglin. You know, just to make a point, a lot of people around town have expressed their concerns that the village is wasting money on this building. Well, it's an investment. We own the property. Those funds exist in a TIF account. They cannot be used for anything but developing that area. If we don't use the money to develop that area, it'll stay the way it is. And I don't think that's a good use of the funds. The funds are there. That's what they're for. I know people think it's a waste of money, but it's really a positive use of the money. The money sitting in the account can't be used for anything else. So we might as well develop something on North Avenue, especially something as positive as improving our community development and our code enforcement departments. Thank you. Mr. Mr. President. Trustee Ayala. Two questions for the village manager. You referred to one permitting in, in your explanation. When you said the one permitting, you're referring to going across the street to public works, correct? That's right. So the one permitting doesn't have anything to do with going to North Avenue. Is that right or not? We will not. If there's an economic development project, we may use the uh, meeting room up there if, if the uh, Board of Trustees so decides to approve it. However, right now, what's happening in the village is there's the permitting process. <coughs> Folks come here for a permit. Sometimes they're sent across the street for public works, and then sometimes they're sent back. Um, so you've got two different building uses for permitting. You have two different staffs doing the permitting process, and you have two different software programs used to do the permitting process. So effective January 1st, we're going to go to one building, one staff, and one software so that anybody who wants to pull up a permit can pull it up on our town, our town software, and know exactly where a permit is, whether it's residential, commercial, 
the storm order permit. It's going to be issued by one of three or four people because we're going to create an area in the front of Public Works where we'll have at least four individuals capable of stepping up to the counter and issuing a permit for almost anything. Now, granted, it will take some time to cross train. This has never been done before. But you go to one building, one staff, one software program, effective January 2nd. Okay. And that's my point is they're gonna, everyone's going to be able to go over here to Public Works to get the permitting done. So the code enforcement will be out there on North Avenue. So I understand you can keep that separate. But I'm not following that how to keep separate from that farm in, in, in distance where, that, where I think it does not work efficiently is to have the one-stop permitting over here at Public Works, but then have a community development office where a if, someone, if a developer came in with a and he wanted an economic development meeting, he's not going to do it where the permit people are stationed, where the engineering is stationed. He's going to go out to where the code enforcement people are stationed on North Avenue. Am I accurate? Not entirely. No offense. That's a fact. No. Because I might be wrong. Right now, if a developer comes here to this building, there's nowhere to meet. Uh, there's no place in community development. Today we tidied up the community the whole room. Not to do that on live camera, but we, we cleaned up that room. But typically, when you have a developer, they meet in my office, in my conference room. They can do that, or in public works, there's a conference room to the left, there's a conference room to the right. So we have many options by making this change. And quite honestly, if they want to meet at 325 East North Avenue, there's also a conference room there. So we're going to have a multitude of options January 1st. And because of January 2nd, I should say, recently we repaired the public's works roof. Now we do have the additional conference room because the ceiling's not leaking. <clears throat> so we'll have at least four different conference rooms if we remodel 325. And you may want to use the conference room of 325 for code enforcement meetings and things of that nature and, and pull some folks in. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Well, President? My pleasure. Are you done, Chris? <coughs> Trusty both. You know, one of the things that we've been talking about for a long time is getting new development into Villa Park, uh, especially North Avenue now that the whole thing is a, is a TIF district. And to have major developers, which those parcels over there are big enough, to come in and go into this room and to make room for them by moving files out in the COW room up there does not leave a very good impression in my mind. Now, if we had a, 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 a place over there on North Avenue that's a very, I don't want to say it has to be a Taj Mahal, but looks professional. We don't look professional here right now. We're trying to impress developers. We're trying to impress somebody who wants to come in and maybe we get lucky a big box store or something like, you know, something like that or a major restaurant chain. Tra chain. You, you know, that's the first impression, and we want to make a good impression. So that's why I think it, you know we need a place that will make that good impression, that they'll be able to go to uh, the community development, the person who they had their original contact with, when be it at a convention or somewhere or some uh, association meeting, to get them to come to Villa Park, will be there, probably will have their office there, and it, you just have to, if you want the, if you want a, the big boys, <coughs> you've got to look like you want to play the game. And that's what this would give us an opportunity to do. Now, as far as the price goes, any contractor will tell you, you know, you figure out how much you, you want to spend, but you always have overages. You know, maybe it's 10%, uh, 20%, but there's always, it's always more than you originally plan on. And by putting this dollar amount in here, we won't have to come back when we're in the middle of the project to ask for more money. 
Now, th just because it says $200,000, that doesn't mean what it's going to be. But it leaves you that little bit of wiggle room so you don't have to come back, stop the project, say, hey, we, you know, we got some more plumbing work we need to do here that we weren't planning on, but we don't have the money budgeted, so, you know, we, we can't do it. So, you know, those are a couple of the, the, the images and, and also being able to finish the project in a, in a timely basis. So, uh, you know, I think it's, a, it's not a bad idea to do it. If we really want to be serious about developing North Avenue, I think it's important that we have an office there with the people in there that are able to make the, uh, to make the deals. So, thank you. Mr. President. Trustee Allen. I completely agree. I don't think anybody on the board would disagree that we need to change that rule. Everyone agrees we don't want to stuff uh, six pro projects into that room, especially if they want to have meetings every other hour. The problem that I'm saying that we have is you're telling me that you're going to send a developer out to North Avenue and you're going to have a meeting out in North Avenue because there's going to be this really nice conference room or nice enough, significantly better area to work in, which I agree is needed. What I'm asking is, what I'm suggesting is, why would I send them out to North Avenue? My engineers are over here, across the street, on home, is my primary point. The image, that's consistent with a good image. A good image isn't, I've got a really nice conference room and building it nicely remodeled on North Avenue. A nice image is, I'm extremely efficient, and if you have a question while you're in this critical meeting that you've had to have this room, and now you've got an engineering question, and the system goes down, or you've got another issue, and the engineer can't be online, or the engineer's out um, on the job, and going across the way is going to be a lot more efficient than waiting for a system to come back up while you're sitting out on North Avenue. Or having everybody pick up, run over here, and have to sit over here anyway to have the engineering meeting or have the engineer run out and wait for him for that 15, 20 minutes. Th those are my points. Beyond that, perfectly agree that the image needs to be better, and I, and I applaud the manager for finding a way to do it. I'm just right now I'm not in agreement with how we're doing it. Uh, I'm in agreement with the principal, though. Nothing further. Can I... Mr. President, can I reply? Sure, Trustee Wolf. You mean you, when you go through the development process, there's different steps in the process. You have the initial contacts or the initial meeting with a broad uh, concept of what the plans are going to be, you know, and, and those would fit in over there at the North Avenue location. When you get farther into the project, when the engineering becomes involved and they have another meeting, then engineering comes comes to the meeting you know that's the way the way I see it working there's there's steps in the process and he really doesn't have to go over to the permit department until we already got him hooked until he's already signed the deal that's when he goes over to the to the get the permits when he sends the people over to that but it before that he's not hooked yet he doesn't have to go for permits engineering can go over there because you know, they've all played the game long enough, played, done this ball game. They know when engineering is needed to come in, and then they can go and attend that meeting. So, that's it. Mr. President. <laughs> Trustee Allen. I've done a lot of those meetings. And those meetings, you, when you do your initial contact with the village, you, you go, you contact the community direct development director. Your next meeting, hopefully within two, you're talking to engineers. You don't, you don't want to be waiting around to meet with engineers after you've done your engineering. You're doing that before you even present any documentation. So you're sitting with planning development director along with at least one engineer that knows what's going on, and I realize that's probably yourself, but um, Vitas, but uh, it, for our village. And it may only, be, only need to be village. Be, it may only need to be Vitas. But at some point, I'm, I'm assuming Venus would like to be able to send somebody else and not and be the only guy that's running around town to North Avenue and Home Avenue. The point of the matter is, it, it doesn't happen as slowly as you're suggesting, is my opinion.
Manager Keaton. Well, thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I mentioned North Avenue and having a meeting there because it's my hopes that that area <coughs> is developed quickly because uh, of the TIF, because we own many parcels there, and because there is some interest shown in some of those parcels. Uh, a lot of the meetings that we, we just spoke about, whether they're engineering or community development or economic development, usually start out with questions zoning, questions about the site, questions about economic development incentives, and then finally, after a while, you get into stormwater detention, on-site, off-site, and that's basically when engineering comes in to answer those questions. But they're not quite on the hook yet, and sometimes if you bring those issues up too quickly, that hook is gone. So we try to keep that in the weeds for a while and hook them with the incentives and the site and zoning and go through that way. And um, really what, what we're doing this evening in another aspect is also the IT project. And we've talked about the IT project. But we're going to become, um, and I want to say, uh, intertwined through LaserFish. We're going to be able to send documents back and forth. We're going to be able to use the same software. And typically, a lot of these meetings are set up in advance. And the site map's already in the table when the developers come in. Or the topos showing uh, one-foot contours, things of that nature. That's all set, and it can be done in any of these buildings. Um, whether, it can, whether it's conducive to be public works, we probably have a couple of engineers there, or North Avenue, or either in my office. Um, and right now, they're in my office, and which is fine. You just bring the maps, and we roll them out, and it's not a problem. So, uh, with, In conjunction with the IT, we're going to be reducing the software that we use, going to be on the same platform, LaserFish, and our scanning capabilities will be increased, and we'll be mobile much more mobile than what we are right now. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? What's on color, Tim? Trustee Bullwinkle. When we talked about the TIF funds. We, it's very limited in terms of what we can spend <coughs> those funds on. So we're talking about just the infrastructure improvements. With that, could we go out and look for grants? You heard me talk a lot about grants to help supplement those types of um, expenses that we're going to incur as we update the building. You know, obviously it's our job to be fiscally responsible, and that's what we're trying to do, we'll continue to do. We'll continue to watch that bottom line. And also, it's an investment in our future. We talk a lot about that. And, you know, at some point, we have to really start looking at that. There's a lot of land on North Avenue. In other areas in town, we're talking about North Avenue as being a primary location for development and redevelopment, but we have a lot of different areas in town that are ripe for the pickings. And this is an investment in our future. And the TIF funds are used specifically for things like this. They're not used, they cannot be used for salaries, they cannot be used for perks, they can't be used for any of those types of things. So, um, you know, when you think about the investment for our future and our job to be fiscally responsible and to continue to watch that bottom line and as those bills come in, we make sure we do this as efficiently as we possibly can and maybe incorporate grants and other opportunities there. You know, there's a lot of different ways to skin this cat, so. Mr. President? Trustee Tagley, call the question. All right, so we're at the, we're at the amendment. Is your package due to have a vote on um, practice has been we would go to the vote on the amendment and then we would go to the vote if on that passed we would go obviously we go to the vote on the main question whether amended or not amended gotcha. so that has been practice so. yeah, okay um, so with uh, trustee Tagley I wanted to end conversation we will then go to uh, We'll have a roll call on the amended, on the amendment for the ordinance amending the annual budget. Is that right? Correct. Wow. So this is a vote on the amendment. This is a vote only on the amendment. This is not a vote on the annual budget. This is only a vote on Trustee Aiello's amendment to accept, to remove 
um, contractual services and fund balance out of TIF 3 North Avenue. Okay, roll call, please. Trustee Taglia? No. Trustee Bullwinkle? No. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Davis? No. Trustee Ayello? Yes. Trustee Bulthus? No. President Cullerton? The motion doesn't pass, so now we will vote on the ordinance amending the annual budget for the Village of Villa Park for the fiscal year commencing on May 1st, 2011 and ending on April 30th, 2012. And we already have a first and a second. Yes. Are we still open? But we're still open for discussion, yes, correct? Sir. We are still open for discussion on an ordinance amending. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments on the ordinance amending? Roll call vote. Trustee, okay, this is the one amending now. Okay, this no. is just no. this the is, main question. The main, one. The main okay. question, okay. first and final. Amending, so the amendment failed, now we're going back to the, the amendment failed, now we go back right, to the. I know, but I thought you just said the amending, so I was wondering what the amending And the ordinance amending. Sorry. Okay. This is the regular one. Right. Okay. Trustee um, Taglia. Yes. Trustee Bullwinkle. Yes. Trustee Case. Abstain. Trustee Davis. Yes. Trustee Aiello. No. Trustee Bolthus. Yes. President Cullerton. Yes. All right. Item 11. Right. Nobody's? No. Why not? Um, you are not, if, if you abstain or you do not vote, it goes with the majority. That's what has to be said for the record. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Okay, then I'll vote. No. <laughs> All right. Item 11, resolution authorizing the signature of a letter of acceptance for the TOD implementation technical assistance program. Item 12, resolution of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, approving the quote from current technologies. I'd like to take both of these at the same time and table them until after the Committee of the Whole. Can I have a motion to table item 11 and 12 until after the Committee of the Whole? Mr. President. Trustee Taglia. The table, table items 11 and 12. Can I have a second, please? Mr. President. Trustee Davis. Second. Questions or comments from the board? Roll call to table item 12, 11 and 12 till after the Committee of the Whole. Trustee Davis? Yes. Trustee Aiello? Yes. Trustee Bulthus? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Bullwinkle? Yes. President Cullerton? Yes. Item 13, resolution authorizing contract for completion of annual TIF reports by Lauterbach and Amon uh, LLC. Can I have a motion for the resolution? President. Trustee Davis. Make a motion for the resolution. Can I have a second? Mr. President. Trustee Bolthus. Second. Questions or comments from the board? Roll call <coughs> vote. Trustee Aiello? Yes. Trustee Bolthus? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Bullwinkle? Yes. Trustee Davis? Yes. President Cullerton? Yes. Item 14, resolution authorizing intergovernmental agreement between the Village of Villa Park and the Village of Lombard, Lombard for contract maintenance of traffic signal located at the intersection of Westmore and St. Charles Road. Can I have a motion for the resolution, please? Mr. President. Trustee Davis. Make a motion for resolution. Can I have a second? Mr. Mr. President. Trustee Bolthus. Second. Questions or comments from the board? Roll call vote, please. Trustee Bolthus? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Bullwinkle? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Davis? Yes. Trustee Aiello? Yes. President Cullerton? Yes. Item 16, resolution authorizing contract with Associated Technical Services for the 2011 Leak Detection Survey Project. Can I have a motion for the resolution, please? Mr. President? Trustee Taglia? I'll move for the yeah. resolution. Excuse me, did President I, Cullerton, yes. Which one did I That skip? was not 15. Oops, I'm sorry. Ah, sorry. I said traffic and traffic. All right. Item 15, resolution authorizing intergovernmental agreement between the Village of Villa Park and the Illinois Department of Transportation for state-maintained traffic signals on state highways within corporate limits of Villa Park. Can I have a motion on the resolution, please? Mr. President. Trustee Taglia? I move for that resolution. Can I have a second? Mr. President. Trustee Bullwinkle? I second the motion on that resolution. Questions or comments for the board? 
Roll call vote. Trustee Taglia? Yes. And Trustee Bullwinkle? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Davis? Yes. Trustee Aiello? Yes. Trustee Bulfus? Yes. Tress and Cullerton? Yes. Item 16, resolution authorizing contract with Associated Technical Services for the 2011 Leak Detection Survey Project. Could I have a motion for the resolution? Mr. President. Trustee Davis. A motion for resolution. Can I have a second? Mr. President. Trustee Taglia. Second. Questions or comments for the board? I have one. Uh, Vetus, by doing this leak detection, how much do we typically save the village? I know every year we do it, and we do it because we there's always leaks somewhere in the system. How much are we usually coming out and saving the village by doing this leak detection program? I don't have exact cost figures, but the savings do exceed the cost of the survey considerably. Okay. And that's every year on a consistent basis, that's correct? That's correct, sir. All right. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for the board? Roll call vote, please. Trustee Bullwinkle? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Davis? Yes. Trustee Aiello? Yes. Trustee Bulfus? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Press and color. Yes. Item 17, unfinished business, none. Item 18, new business, appointments to boards and commissions, John Cuthbertson, Traffic and Safety Commission. Hop on up, John. And our clerk will actually swear you in. Oh, wait. First we have to approve you. Get approved you coming in. Can I have a motion for approval? Mr. President. Trustee Davis. Make a motion for approval. Can I have a second? Mr. President. Trustee Bullwinkle. Aye. Second the motion. Questions or comments from the board? Roll call vote, please. Trustee Case. Yes. Trustee Davis. Yes. Trustee Aiello? Yes. Trustee Bullfuss? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Bullwinkle? Yes. President Cullerton? Yes. Now the clerk will swear you. By the way, John, thank you very much for stepping up and helping this village out. I do appreciate it. I know the board appreciates it. And whether they believe it or not, the community appreciates it, too. <laughs> John, you're at the podium. Anything you want to say? No. All right. <laughs> Do we have anything for executive session? One item. Okay. Item 19, consider executive session, RE5, ILCS-C1, personnel matters and collective bargaining, 5 ILCS-120-2, C5 litigation, and 5 ILCS-120-2, C11, purchase or lease of real property for the public body. Can I have uh, a motion for executive session? Mr. President. Trustee Bullwinkle. Make a motion for executive session. Can I have a second, please? Mr. President. Trustee Aiello. Second. Questions or comments for the board? Mr. President. Trustee Davis. This going to be a long one? No. <laughs> Order pizza now. Yes, that would be. <laughs> it will be a very long one, Trustee Davis. Any other questions? No, sir. This All right. Uh, roll call vote, please. Trustee Davis. Yes. Trustee Aiello? Yes. Trustee Bulfus? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Bullwinkle? Yes. President Cullerton? Yes. Item 20, public participation on non-agenda items. I know it took a while to get here, but this is the time that the public, if you want to speak on an item that wasn't on the agenda or is not on the Committee of the Whole, now would be your time to speak. If you could come to the podium, state your name, your address, and uh, keep your comments to about three minutes. Seeing no one from the public, we've got item 21, reports and recommendations of elected officials. And I'll start on my right, Trustee Bolthus. Nothing tonight, Mr. President. Trustee Taglia. No report, sir. Trustee Case. Nothing. Trustee Davis. Uh, Mr. President, one thing. Uh, manager, any reports on the Dunkin' Donuts site that was supposed to be demoed already? 
And for that, thank you, uh, mm -hmm. Trustee Davis. I may have to look to uh, our Assistant Director of Community Development. I know that they came in and pulled an application to demolish, but I'm not sure if they've returned that yet. They have all the, uh, the things in for application, except that they needed to do the abandonment. So that's the only outstanding thing before we can issue the permit. The abandonment is as in utilities? Yeah, that's for sewer and water. Up. For sewer and water. They had all the, like, AT&T, NICOR, ComEd came out, but they still need to have um, the sewer and water abandoned. Because we have a timeline on that, don't we? That has come and passed? It's passed. They passed, they passed their deadline, yeah. Are we doing anything about that? Yes. I'm tired of looking at it, to be honest Thank with you. you. So am I. <laughs> uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, uh, the village attorney, I will be uh, talking about that first thing in the morning. Uh, Melissa and I talked about that late last week. They're past their deadline. And if we continue to extend the deadline, they'll always think that we'll give in. So I think it's time to uh, take a harder stance around. Yeah, I'm down. Mr. President. Trustee Allen. I thought you were saying they pulled the permit, but there was a storm water just had to be disconnected for them to perform on a permit. They've applied for the permit, but the only outstanding thing before we can issue it is that uh, they need to okay. get the abandonment. So it's time they applied, but you can't approve it. So we exp so at the time that they the window they had to hit expired. They hadn't applied before the window expired. They only applied like last week. Yeah. Ah, okay. And the only thing they're waiting for is sewer and water to be disconnected? Correct. Don't we disconnect the sewer and water? I believe sewer and... I, I believe that we have to... Uh, no? Watch. Yeah, you watch it. We watch? Observe and report. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. President. We don't, Trusty we, Allen. We don't shut it off at the Buffalo Box? Out of the street. Depending on the location of water and sewer service, it's either start off at the right away. It's more than just at the Buffalo box or the main itself. Because okay. Thank you. Any other questions, Trustee Davis? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Bullwinkle. Yes. Um, starting off with my two typical questions: updates on the Ardmore Avenue bridge and the South Villa lighting. On South Villa, I saw the lights. A lot of them have been installed, but uh, just looking for updates since it's been a few weeks since our last board meeting. So it's okay. I was going to ask Rich Salerno to give the report. To All them. right, that's cool. That's why I'm smiling. I promise the residents will keep information flowing. So good evening. Thank you. Uh, first, in regards to the South Villa reconstruction project, yes, uh, most of the residential lights have been installed. They look nice, by the way. Thank you. Um, the subcontractor has received partial delivery of some of the lights for the business district. They are ornamental, so they're awaiting those to be delivered. They're supposed to be sometime possibly this week, as well as the two lighting controls, which energize both circuits okay. to get it lit. So we currently also have ComEd on board. As soon as those controls are installed, for them to actually put a power drop so we can light those up. So that's hopefully forthcoming this week or the early part of next week been waiting for a schedule from the subcontractor. With the holidays and everything, hopefully by the end of the year, let's say, for sure. We're hoping. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as soon as they do come in, they're on board. Okay. In regards to the Ardmore Bridge, uh, progress has been being made. Mm -hmm. The steel piles were driven the end of last week and this week, and they're framing for the piers. There's one pier on the one side, yeah. so that's moving along quite well. It is. Sounds like we're still on target for a June, July 2012 completion date. Then sounds like we're sticking with we're that We're still timeline. on target for yes. Okay. They still want to do a number of activities prior to the shutdown. Okay. They want to get both both piers in. Yeah. All right. Good. Glad to hear we're on target for that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. My next item is uh, Manager Keener. Any other updates on the 2012 landfill ban and how the village is? Going to be tackling that. That's in regards to the electronics recycling. Um, January 1st, 2012, we'll no longer be able to put electronic recyc recyclables at uh, your computers, TVs, whatnot, 
in a landfill. So the village manager has been working really hard on coming up with a plan with Public Works. So just looking for an update on where we're at with that. Yes, uh, staff met with uh, representatives of uh, uh, Mr. Strom's organization uh, today, and effective uh, January 1st, 2012, e-waste will be banned from the Illinois landfills. Right. And we're working on a program where <clears throat> we'll have be able to allow residents and businesses of Villa Park stop by an area and actually deposit the e-waste in a uh, facility that we've designed. Um, and and once a week or every two weeks, the the container will be emptied and, uh, and be free again to be filled up because after the 1st of January there will be no place for these e-waste uh, computers or monitors or modems or printers to be deposited so if a resident or a business puts those to the curb our refuge collector will not pick that up because it cannot be deposited in landfills so with this program that we're designing and we're getting underway they can they'll have to bring it here to Village Hall to an area that we've designated but they can drop it off free of charge, and then it will be picked up either bi-weekly or weekly. And then the village uh, can uh, make some, some money off of that when we turn it into the uh, folks that recycle it, and it should pay for the units that we'll have to rent and uh, keep on site. So, Thank you, Your Honor. And the Environmental Concerns Commission I'm sure could help facilitate that in some way, shape, or form. We can figure that out, too. So. My last item, speaking of environmental concerns, if anyone's interested in serving on that commission, there's currently three positions. So if anybody out there is interested, you can go to Village Hall, pick up an application, and Ms. Ryan is a, is a new commissioner for the Environmental Concerns Commission. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Ayala? Mr. President, I got one recommendation. Got to pass out. Okay. One more revision to my own side work. Rejected twice. Or more. Oh no, maybe only once, but probably. And I'm recommending or asking the board to consider it next time. That's it. Nothing more, Judge. Your Honor. Whatever your name is. Tom, please. Mr. Tom. Thank you, Trustee Bob, or Trustee Ayala. Really? Uh, Clerk Kornacki? Oh, nothing tonight. Thank you. Uh, Manager Keener? Nothing this evening, Your Honor. All right. Um, there you are. No report tonight. Uh, I don't know you've done a spectacular job. I know. It's really been tough, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I do have a question. Scheduling for the rest of the month. Do you have a decision on that? Yes, Scheduling for the rest of the month. Our uh, board meeting will come on December 21st, which is the designated I was hoping that on the 26th, on the 25th, we would actually meet Sunday night when everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking Sunday morning. Uh, I will. Uh, I'll. I'll poll the board if uh, if everybody could get back to me in an email on what their thoughts are on the 26th, um, and possibly have. The bill listing or the second bill listing be uh, next week instead of a workshop, and then no meeting on the 26th. Uh, if the board can get back to me on that, Manager Keener. Yes, Your Honor. The bill listing will be ready for the 19th. So get back to me if the 19th would be acceptable to everybody. Um, and we'll go from there. <laughs> no, because we cannot take a vote. It's not on the agenda. Um, <laughs> real quick, I just want to say if uh, if anybody has or hasn't uh, hasn't dealt with it, uh, I hope you uh, are all having a great holiday season. We've had uh, a fantastic uh, opportunity to not spend dollars on snow removal, so I know that all of us are looking towards that as a great thing in the budget. I know uh, Vetus is looking at that as a great thing in his budget as well. Uh, Greg, probably for a lot of his public work or his Parks and Rec staff, is probably it's a good thing. Um, I mean, thank you. <laughs> so, I, uh, but if you haven't looked on the website uh, and in both of our local papers, they've had the snow removal uh, process of what streets will be done first, what arterials will be done first.
uh, how to get sort of out of your neighborhood if we get some of these big snows that we've tended to get in the last year. So please pay attention to that. I know uh, last year, actually, Christmas Eve or Christmas night was a pretty horrific snow that uh, came on a weekend. Um, and, you know, part of our policy to save money uh, is we try to at least just do the arterials but delay so that we get guys on straight time, our staff on straight time towards the, uh, towards the, uh, I guess, main business days. Uh, we're going to continue that process as well to save money in our budget. Um, sort of leaves you to be wary of what nights Christmas Eve and Christmas fall on. Um, so make sure to give yourself a little extra time. Uh, but again, in this sort of tight economy, we're looking to save dollars where we can. Um, so I appreciate not only Vetus's work on that, but Dan Sullivan's work on that uh, when he came up with that plan. We're about in year three of that plan now. This will be our third year of going to that plan. So I appreciate the work on that and to save on the bottom line. Um, also, I hope everybody enjoyed Joyful Traditions. I know I had a great time. I saw Sid out there doing a lot of work on there. I saw all the trustees out there. So I want to thank uh, the Chamber of Commerce and all of our local businesses in town. Um, Christmas is upon us. Villa Avenue was shut down a lot this summer. Let's make sure we're shopping on Villa Avenue. Make sure we're shopping in the Ardmore District. Make sure we're shopping on Roosevelt and North as well. Uh, every tax dollar you spend in Villa Park goes directly back to Villa Park. So please make sure you're shopping in town. And with that, we will go to Committee of the Whole. Item 1, approved minutes of November 14, 2011, Committee of Whole Meeting. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Mr. President. Trustee Davis. Take a motion to approve the minutes. Can I have a second? Mr. President. Trustee Taglia. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Trustee Davis. Yes. Trustee Ayello. I understand. <coughs> Trustee Bulpus. Yes. Trustee Taglia. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Bullwinkle? Yes. President Culkerton? Yes. Item 2, consider electric aggregation. Manager Keener. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. Through municipal electric aggregation, Illinois municipalities, municipalities can help residents and small businesses to reduce energy costs and contribute to energy efficient practices within the village. Through proper implementation, electric aggregation programs offer several economic benefits including competitive opportunities, a way to obtain, obtain service and products for favorable terms, and an opportunity to contribute to meaningful environmental benefits. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the public? Any questions or comments from the board? Mr. President? Trustee Davis? I have a question. Um, does this mean we're going to become like uh, some other towns like Batavia and actually be the supplier for the no. town? No. Now, what this is, is uh, was it last year the ruling came down to do aggregation, electric aggregation, that you had to go to referendum? Uh, came down or was it two summer, years ago? Summer 2009. Right? Summer 2009. <clears throat> for us to have competitive bidding within or opportunities within the village uh, for people to opt out of ComEd, we have to go to referendum. So that would be, am I correct? So that would be, if you wanted to say bring in, there's a couple suppliers out there. There's uh, Viridian, Blue Star, um, Intellis. Uh, there's four or five out there. But to deal with them and the village to deal with them, the village has to go to referendum uh, to allow the village to have that opt-out process of ComEd. That's what the procedure is. So if you wanted to go to a, a secondary source for your electric instead of ComEd, in Villa Park, unless we pass the referendum, you wouldn't have that opportunity, correct? Or is that... Uh, My understanding of it, and, and Jim, yeah, that this would give the village of Villa Park the right to negotiate a single provider. And so we could go out and negotiate, get a single provider that hopefully would give our residents an opportunity to get cheaper electricity. However, even if it passes with the wording of the referendum, 
we would still allow any resident not to buy into the single provider. So we can go out, negotiate, get a single provider that we would hope would give us a better deal, a better rate for our electricity. But if I, as a resident, don't want to part, don't want to change from Commonwealth Edison, I can opt out of the single provider chosen by the village. What is happening in many areas is not only is it the village, but villages and neighboring villages are coordinating if these referendum referenda pass because the larger the negotiating group they believe, the better the price. There is, however, the fact that Commonwealth Edison's rate limit right now expires in one year. Is that correct? Yes. yes. And so no one knows if all of these wonderful ideas will ever have any realistic effect. Well, and, and truly, I know this from seeing other towns, uh, the delivery of the electricity is still being delivered through Commonwealth Correct. Edison my question. things. Correct. Correct. However, a lot of municipalities in the past two years have at least gone to referendum to offer the opportunity um, per referendum. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> Thank I you. don't know how to... Thank you, Your Honor. I, I have a... question. I have an uh, electric aggregation timeline, and certain things uh, need to be adhered to. For instance, if the Board of uh, Trustees would like to place a question on the referendum for the March election, we would have to propose and pass a resolution um, or ordinance to allow the binding public question to appear on the ballot by January 3rd. So if we're interested, on the 19th, we would have to have action um, doing so, and it would be a fi first and final action. And then on January 12th is the last day for the circuit clerk and the local election official <coughs> to certify any, any binding public question or advisory referenda uh, to the election authority. So January 12th is also another point of interest. And then... March 20th, the public votes on a referendum at general election. So really, between March 20th and probably January 12th, if we were interested in placing the question on and did place the question on, we would be required to have at least one public town hall meeting to explain to all of our citizens exactly what aggregation of electricity is. In fact, it's been suggested to have more than one public meeting. I've been through several meetings, and it's, it's very interesting because on your ComEd bill, the only thing that's going to change is the electric portion and through the opportunity to aggregate or pull together our citizens, we have an opportunity to lower only the electric portion of our bill, not NICOR, but only the specific section of the electric. ComEd will still deliver, and ComEd will be responsible to repair but the origination of the electricity will come through a different party, which through aggregation can somehow lower the cost. In fact, I had uh, uh, staff pull together uh, from the Illinois Commerce Commission effective today that just numerous uh, municipalities in our area have already done this and have been supplied by such folks as First Energy Solutions, direct energy rate, uh, integrates rate, um, many of them, and they appear to be outstanding uh, cents per kilowatt. And through the aggregation um, <coughs> process, if everyone can think back that it doesn't harm the village because we're not paid through the cost, we're paid through usage. It doesn't harm ComEd. Their bill does not go down because they don't have the opportunity <coughs> to aggregate as the other party does. So it's a very unique system, and ComEd will be deregulated sometime in uh, 2013. And if we develop our plan of operation and governance in such a fashion, we might be able to take advantage when they're deregulated and fall beneath our rates to take advantage of that lower cost.
cost. So, um, Your Honor, that's really all I have to say on it. That was a mouthful. Um, any other questions or comments? President Trustee uh, Bullwinkle. Um, Manager Keener. Yes. How? What's the duration of these contracts? They're negotiated one year, three years. What's? The, I'm glad you brought up history from what other municipalities have done because nice to know how much are they really going to save. I, I'm a little concerned that I hope this isn't a low ball to get people into the system and then they jack it way up, you know, at the end of the contract duration. So we to make sure that there's, you know, we are real clear on, on this. It appears, uh, for instance, Erie, Illinois, uh, their term is three years. Yeah. Grays Lake is two years. Uh, Oak Park is two years. Oak Brook is two years. North Aurora is two years. New Lenox only through September 2013. So it's very, yeah. uh, it would be my recommendation probably for just several years yeah. that we're not locked in for too long. Mr. President, Trustee Ayala, does Cub have any um, comment on this type of negotiating tactic or this kind of ordinance? Your Honor, uh, I've met with ComEd. Uh, three, maybe four times, been very helpful, have offered to even help us through the process because they realize at the end of the day it doesn't affect their bottom line because they're still distributing it, they're still responsible for the repair, and uh, been very helpful, very helpful. That's comment. I think the question, question was the Cub, not comment. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Cub has offered, too. I just received an email from Cub today offering us assistance. They, do they seem to think that's a positive? I mean, it seems like a positive, at least to have the option. But um, I, I, I believe, I truly believe the Cub believes this is an opportunity for the citizens of Villa Park to save money. Um, I recently spoke with the manager of, uh, uh, I believe it was Oak Brook, and when they went through the system, I believe that their energy... Their electric bills for that village went down on an average of 30%. Just that specific section. Yeah, no kidding. Thank you, Your Honor. Any other questions or comments? Um, I guess the big question is going to be... Uh, Do we have enough time? I mean, obviously, we have enough time, but are we going to have enough time to actually educate and everything else? I guess the key will be whoever the provider is, um, and that would be correct, because or would it be multiple providers? What what we do, Your Honor, would be that on the 19th we prepare the necessary material to pass so we can get the referendum question on the ballot for March 20th, so it would have to be a first and final reading. And really, quite honestly, there's no sense in recreating the wheel. The material is there. We can just change uh, the headings to the Village of Villa Park. I have before me this evening a plan of operation and governance from the Village of Oak Brook that looks like it's a very sound document. And that will help us um, create a possible subcommittee that would uh, help us uh, through the negotiations and um, and meetings with uh, residents and businesses throughout the time period. So I, I think we have enough time, Your Honor. Who's going to be the company, though? Uh, we can go out for bids. Right. Yeah, we solicit bids. When, when would we solicit bids? After the referendum. Uh, we would solicit bids in late June. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then um, cost to run the referendum? The cost to run the referendum shouldn't be to the village, other than the uh, part that Rich was talking about in terms of education. <coughs> but providers are very anxious to assist us because they want to sit down and negotiate with all of the municipalities come June to be the provider. So they want these referenda to pass. pass. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments?
this is just for consideration. This isn't for anything else. So there's no motion for anything, correct? Uh, actually, no, Your Honor, just a consensus. A consensus for what? Consensus. Moving it forward. To moving it forward. Yes. Okay. All right, then we'll do a consensus to uh, do a referendum or to at least have the language for a referendum first and final on the 19th, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, all right, consensus to move this to the formal. Trustee Aiello? Yes. Trustee Bolthus? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Bullwinkle? Yes. Trustee Davis? Yes. President Cullerton? Yes. All right. Item three, consider employee handbook. Manager Keener. Thank you, Your Honor. An employee handbook has been prepared for distribution to all village employees that includes topics regarding employer obligations, personnel policies, employee leave, employee behavior, insurance deferred compensation, and retirement benefits. Your Honor, this is a project that the staff has been working on for a number of months and has went through various revisions and has been reviewed by the, our department heads, uh, our previous uh, village attorney, and, and now our fabulous village attorney, <laughs> Kathy Fieldmore, and um, do have uh, our human resource manager, Janet Binder, in the audience to take us through it, if you like, Your Honor. Might as well. Yeah, I would. <laughs> Janet really wanted to speak this evening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She like usually is. She the, usually uh, is uh, chopping at this. Every page, every word. We got it. We have it. Um, just to give you a little bit of history about this, um, we have always had a fairly decentralized <laughs> human resource function because we do have four labor unions. So, in sitting down with the manager and trying to put a, a booklet together. We also were well aware of the fact that our labor contracts, which cover probably about 75 to 80 percent of our employees, our full-time employees, um, we also had to try and incorporate as much as we could um, to refer back. So we've always had sort of a loose um, collection of policies and procedures that don't necessarily fall within the labor contracts. So what we tried to do is to pull all of that information together into one booklet. We have always had an orientation program, but we've always given people, you know, uh, in, their, in, their policies individually. So this should put everything kind of into one booklet. Um, it'll also cover those employees who are not under the labor contracts. Um, we are going to uh, probably give some of this at least to our regular part-time employees um, and then we may also be looking in the future to do something a little bit more geared towards safety in general. We've, we sort of combine safety and some employment policies but I think our next step is to take a look at just the safety policies and procedures. So we've had these in place as you know the federal government and the state government has liked to uh, come up with a whole list of new regulations and so I think Rich and I both feel like this is always going to be sort of a, an evolving um, booklet since um, with each new um, governor and or president, you know, they have, they have a tendency to want to change some of the things that are already out there. So um, basically that's what we've provided you is um, I know the board has taken a look at it already and then hopefully if you'll approve it, we'll go to a resolution and then final reading. And, you know, we should be able to get it out to all of the departments and our employees. There you go. Any questions or comments from the public? Questions or comments from the board? President Cullerton. Trustee Bullwinkle. All I have to say about this is I'm glad that we finally have a booklet, one centralized, you know, document where everything is, is neatly, you know, bound together in one document.